Let's look over some examples for rational expressions and equations for the SAT math section. So number one says simplify the rational expression. What I'm going to do is factor the top and bottom and then cancel out the common factors. So the top is going to become, let's see, what would multiply to negative 12 and add up to negative 4? I think I can use, let me just write this out, so negative 12 is going to be 1 and 12, and since it has to add up to negative, the larger number is going to be negative. And then we have 2 and 6, and we have 3 and 4, so I'm putting negatives on all the larger ones. Looks like 2 and negative 6 will add up to negative 4. So that becomes v plus 2 times v minus 6 on the top. And then for the bottom one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the greatest common factor first, which is a 3. So before I go on factoring, I'm going to take out a 3 because 3, negative 9, negative 30. I get 3 times v squared minus 3v minus 10. And let's keep factoring this if we can. What multiplies to negative 10 and adds up to negative 3? Well, negative 5 times 2. So what I could change the bottom into is 3 times v plus 2, v minus 5. So I'll just get rid of, get rid of that there. Where are the common factors? Well, v plus 2 is going to cancel out. And I'm left with v minus 6 on the top divided by 3 times v minus 5. Or I could write the bottom as... 3v minus 15. So either way for the denominator there. All right, so that's number one, a little factoring. Number two, solve for x where d equals 3a squared times b over 4c to the power of n plus 5 times x. Now this looks kind of tricky because there's a lot here, but the easy way to deal with this is just to notice that I've got some fraction times x. So if I multiply by the reciprocal, on both sides, this fraction will turn into 1. Okay, so we have d equals 3a squared b over 4c to the power of n plus 5 times x. And I'm just going to multiply by this divided by this. So 4c to the power of n plus 5 divided by 3a squared times b these all just cancel out like that. So I've got x by itself is equal to this. So we, we had to multiply both sides by 4c to the power of n plus 5 over 3a squared times b times d. So x is the only thing that's left here. It's equal to this expression. They do this on the SAT sometimes. It's just to notice that, oh, I've got to isolate this variable. Then I just need to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, number three, another solve for x. a equals x plus 1 over x minus b. There's an x plus something in the top and an x minus something in the bottom. Now, in this case, we need to get x by itself. And it, it looks a little bit tricky, but what we can do is... I'll write out the steps here. The first thing I'm going to do is I want all my x's in the numerator. I don't want an x in the top and the bottom. So what I'll do is multiply by x minus b on both sides so that this is gone in the denominator and all my x's are on the top. So distribute my a and I would get ax minus ab is equal to x plus 1. And then I want to bring all my x's to one side of the equation next. So I'll subtract ax. Okay, so I'll do minus ax minus ax on both sides, negative ab equals x minus ax, and I still have a plus 1. My goal is to get all the x's on one side and factor out x so that I can divide by the other factor. If that sounds complicated, let me show you what I mean. So I want, I want to factor out an x, which means I only want terms with an x as a factor in it. So I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So minus 1, minus 1. I will get, uh, let's go down here. So I get negative AB minus 1 equals, these are gone, 
x minus ax. Now I can factor out an x, and it's 1 minus a is the other factor. x times 1 is x, x times negative a is negative ax. Okay, that side is the same. So finally I can get x by itself by dividing both sides by the other factor. So that was my goal all along, is to get x in the numerator, and, and then factor out x, and divide by the other factor. So that's gone x equals negative a b minus 1 over 1 minus a. If on the SAT that option isn't one of your multiple choice options to answer, you could do something like this. Negative a b minus 1 over 1 minus a. If you, if you say, I swear I did all the math right, I don't know why that one's not there. Well, if you multiply by negative 1 over negative 1, that would be the same thing as just positive a b plus 1 divided by, this would be negative 1 plus a, because these signs will flip. And you might see a minus 1. They might write it as positive a minus 1. So this, this would be the answer right here, or, or this. They're really equivalent. So again, if you don't see your answer, it might just be that you multiply by negative 1 over negative 1, and you might see the answer that's given there. Number four, if ax plus 4 times bx minus 2 equals 21x squared plus cx minus 8, and a plus b equals 10, what are two possible values of c? Now, this topic was about rational expressions and equations. This one actually isn't a rational expression equation, but I'm just sticking it on here to show some uh, algebra work that you can do to this equation. This type of problem does come up a lot of times on the SAT, practice tests at least, that, that I've seen. And the key is to get both sides into standard form. So combine like terms on both sides. And then use what you know about the coefficients. Compare the coefficients to solve for the answer. Let me show you what I mean. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the left side into standard form. So I'm going to foil this. A time, AX times BX is ABX squared. And then ax times negative 2 is minus 2ax. 4 times bx is plus 4bx. 4 times negative 2 is minus 8. And that is all equal to what's on the right side, 21x squared plus cx minus 8. And it's asking for the two values of c. Well, c is how many x's I have on the right side here. So I want to find out how many x's I have on the left side. What I can do is factor out an x from here, and altogether I would have uh, I would have 4b minus 2a x's, right? 4bx minus 2ax. If I combine them as 4b minus 2ax's. I also have abx squared still, and I also have a negative 8. So how many x's do I have on the right? It's c. How many do I have on the left? It's 4b minus 2a. If I figure out 4b minus 2a, I'll figure out what c is, because they're both talking about how many x's there are. Well, how am I going to do that? I know that a plus b equals 10. So a plus b is equal to 10. And I'm going to compare the other coefficients. So now let's look at how many x squareds we have. We have a, b, x squareds. And on the right side, we have 21 x squared. That means that a times b equals 21. So now I can figure out what a and b are. Well, what, what would multiply to 21 and add up to 10? a could be 3, and b could be 7. Or it could be the reverse of this. a could be 7, and, and b could be 3. So that's what I can plug in. a is 3, b is 7 to figure out this, which is the same as what C is. So let's do four times seven. So four times seven minus two times three, 28 minus six is 22. That's one possible value of C. So we're looking for two values. The other one is if I flip it, four times three minus two times seven, 12 minus 14 equals negative two. So those are the two 
possible values that C could be in this problem. Again, the key is to put both sides into standard form and compare how many x squared you have, how many x's you have, and you can get clues as to how you can solve the problem from that.